Hello, I'm back in my Wonderland mini golf toy box with Alice, and today we're going to hook up the logic for it and finish the toy box. <laughs> First thing I want to do is add in the rest of the obstacles. I added in some of them during the build exercise, like the terrain slopes and the hedges, but now I want to add in the rest of the obstacles. And we're going to begin on hole number two with the pendulum. And I've kind of dropped these ahead of time just so I don't have to scroll in the drawers so much. But this one you'll find it's under the platforming toys. This needs to sit right down here in front of this door like that. The problem you'll notice is that it's hitting that little fence over there on the side. And so temporarily you're going to need to move this little fence out of the way. And once we put the pendulum in place, then we can put that back. So like that. And you'll notice it turns red, so you got to make sure you put it in while the pendulum isn't sitting on top of it. So there's the pendulum. And uh, we're going to go ahead and style this, and I'm going to use the Plastic Wood 2 style. I'll apply that. <laughs> there it goes. I just think that matches the look of the cottage pretty well. So there's that. And ignore the creativity toys. I'm going to cover those in a minute. All right. The next obstacle, or the next uh, feature, is actually on hole three, and we added this last time. It was the uh, super cannon. So that's already in place. We don't need to worry about that. There's nothing on hole three or four. Now hole number five, we have some sweeper bars. And we pick this up. Again, this is underneath the platforming toys. It's the rotating spike. And let me pull up my screenshots here just to make sure I put these in the right places like I had them before. This is going to sit in here just like that, as close as I can get to that wall. And it's on the first terrain block here on the hole. The next one is going to sit over here uh, about like that. I'm going to rotate it and that's about as close as I can get to that wall. And I'm rotating it so that when the toy box loads the, they won't be oriented exactly the same way. And then we'll flip this back for the last one which is going to go over here on this terrain seam on the right and as close as I can get to that wall. So that's where the sweeper bars go. All right, the next obstacle is on hole number eight, and it's King Candy moving along this path. And I've already placed the path here. The path starting point is lined up with the edge of this terrain, and it's about halfway between the edge of this terrain block and this terrain seam. So that's about where I've placed that. And then the second path point is lined up over here with the edge of that. Again, I dropped this ahead of time to save time. For the properties, you're going to set it up like I have here. With active on, speed is 50, looped and rail slider off, auto start objects when connected, leave that on. All right, and King Candy, you'll find him under the set pieces. He's the King Candy Cybug. He's unlocked through the um, Toy Box Speedway game. So we'll drop him down and open the logic menu for him. We'll do a new path connection. Toy Box path, and he immediately starts moving. But we'll open the logic menu for him. And under the properties, under Toy Box Path, we're going to set it like this. So 100 is fine, off is fine, 0, 0, 100 is fine, horizontal offset is fine, but vertical offset, he's actually hovering a bit too high off the ground. If I come back and look at this, you'll see he's up pretty high, and the ball can actually pass underneath him. So we need to lower him down a little bit. So we're going to set the vertical offset to minus 2. 
Those are fine, and the movement style needs to be back and forth. So there's King Candy, and that's a pretty easy obstacle. And you'll notice now his belly is right on the ground, so he's definitely going to block any kind of ball you try to move <laughs> past him. Alright, hole number 9 has the pinball toys. And you find these. You pick that up. You'll find this under gameplay toys. And we're going to place three of these down. One of them I'm going to place in the center of this block here. That's where the first will go. The second is going to sit right up here on this seam between those two fence pieces. We're going to put it about a block over, so as if you were putting two of these here. So just like that, that's where those go. And then the pinball bumpers go down here around the hole. This one is going to go sit in here like that. This one is going to sit in here like that. So there's hole number nine. Alright, that is it for the obstacles. Again, we added all the rest in during the build exercise. Next up is the logic. And because I'm not doing any scoring, the logic for this is very simple. Um, we're basically just placing the ball at the start of the course and removing it when it goes in the hole. And to do that, at the start of each hole we have a locator, which is where the ball is going to go. We have a button, and we have a falling object generator. And over here at this hole, in each hole we have a trigger area at the bottom of the hole. And one of the reasons I put this hole, uh, made it two blocks deep, is so that the trigger area will sit down inside the hole. So the player will actually see the ball roll down into the hole and disappear. So you won't actually see the ball vanish. And I think that's really good. If the top of this trigger area was even with the top of the ground, you wouldn't see the ball go into the hole. You would just see it reach the hole and disappear. It wouldn't actually go in, which is, to me is a little disconcerting. So that's why I designed it this way. So we have a trigger area in the bottom of each hole. And then I have a logic gate, an action enforcer, a kill switch, and a sound generator. And on each hole, again, on each of the other holes, we have the locator, the button, the falling object generator, and a trigger area down inside the hole. And you'll notice there are no creativity toys around any of the other holes. Because they all do the same thing. And so I'll show you how to hook them up one time and you can do this for the rest of the holes. Alright, so for the falling object generator, every hole has its own, so you're going to do this for every hole. So the falling object generator, you're going to connect that to the locator. And I'll show you the locator and button placements here in a moment. And there are no properties on this, so you're good to go there. So you connect up the locator and then you connect up the button. So a new logic connection when pressed, come up to the falling object generator, and you're going to generate the ESPN golf ball. And there you go. <laughs> that puts the button or the ball in place. That's super, super simple. Now over here, every time the ball goes into a ball goes into a hole, there's three things I want to do. And it's the same three things on every hole. So to minimize the logic connections, that's why I have this logic gate here. So on the trigger area, for each hole, we're going to do a new logic connection. When entered by physics ball, we're going to come to the logic gate and do an input. And this logic gate is going to do the three things that we need. So a new logic connection here on output. First thing we'll do is come to the kill switch and defeat, and that will destroy the ball, which will help save memory so you don't have balls collecting inside this toy box. Second thing this logic gate will do is a new logic connection on output. We will have 
the triggering player celebrate and that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. It's probably better just to have all players celebrate. And then on the logic gate, new logic connection on output, come over here to musical fanfare, which is my end of, end of mission sound. And again, the reason I'm not doing the triggering player on here is actually because the triggering player is the physics ball. <laughs> it's not actually a player. And so that's why that doesn't really work. So that's why I'm doing it that way. I have noticed sometimes it actually does work the way I would expect, and most of the time, though, it doesn't. So, so there you go. That's the logic for the hole, and that's very simple. So then on hole number two, you're going to do the same thing, except that from here out, all the holes are simpler. So you do a new locator connection on the falling object generator, connect it up to the locator, you go to the button, new logic connection when pressed, generate the golf ball, and then thirdly, you come over to the trigger area, New logic connection when entered by physics ball. And you go over here to the logic gate and input. Because that's already hooked up, that's all you have to do. So the logic on every hole is very, very simple. Let me show you, there is one exception and I'll get there in a moment, but before we do, let's take a look at the placement of all of these toys. So the button for hole number two sits over here the locator is sitting about here, straight, lined up straight with that opening. And you'll wonder maybe why it's not back here further. It's mainly because the camera will hit this thing if you back this locator up too much. So that's why it's over here in the middle of the block. And by the way, this one is located in the middle of that terrain block. And you can see where the button was there. Hole number three, the locator's in the middle of that terrain block. The button's over here in that corner. Hole number four, button is in that corner. Locator's in the middle of that terrain block. Hole number five, button is straight across from the stairs. The locator is on this terrain seam right in the middle. Hole number six. We have the button right here off the end of the rope bridge. The locator is right here. And this is the hole that's a little bit different. I'm gonna come back to this in a minute because we have the enemies <laughs> here. All right, hole number seven has the locator in the middle of that block with the button over here. Number eight has the button here in this corner, the locator oriented like that, right in the middle, this way, in the middle, like that. Hole number nine, locator is in the middle of this block, and you see where the button's put, placed. And in this one, the button is off of those stairs, and this locator is right in the middle, going that way, and it's lined up about like you see it there. So that is all of the locator and button placements. Now, hole number six, again, is a little bit different. So what you're gonna do over here, this button has to do two things. So just like always, for all of the other holes, you're gonna connect this up to the locator. You're gonna connect this up to the falling object generator. And generate the golf ball. And then you're also going to have this button do one more thing. New logic connection when pressed. We're gonna come over here to our enemy wave generator 
and generate the wave. And I've got four locators back here up against the wall. And the locator placement doesn't really matter. And I've connected them all to my enemy wave generator with the new locator connection uh, uh, option. The wave is configured with two Soldier of Clubs and two Soldier of Hearts enemies. And the properties are set up this way. So pushing that button will generate the enemies. If you have two players, when player two presses that button to put their ball out here, uh, the enemies are already there, so nothing more should happen. And once you finish hooking up the other holes, and all the holes are hooked up, then you can move all of these creativa toys down below the terrain out of the way. So you can put that down there. You can put these four toys down below as well. And then once that's done, you'll be all finished. And that's all there is to this toy box. It's one of the easier toy boxes to build, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Let me know what you think when you get a chance to play it for yourself. Since this little mini-series ended up being a bit shorter than I expected, and because I'm still tweaking Frontierland, which is the next area I'm going to do in my Disneyland series, and I'm not yet ready to begin that, I'm going to do another short series of videos starting Wednesday. As I mentioned in Episode 1, I've been experimenting a lot with the sports toys, so I'm going to show you some of my other sports games that I've created. Each episode in this next little series will be a standalone episode. I'll demo the game and show you how to build it in the same episode, similar to what I did for my Bantha Ball video. I think you'll like some of these games, and they'll hopefully give you some additional ideas for building your own sports games. Before you go, I want to remind those of you who are building this on your own systems that I have logic diagrams on my blog that will help you out. The link is in the video description. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking my photo in the lower right corner. Take care!